vaccination is an invasive medical procedure and any medical procedure in Canada is something to which all Canadians have the right to consent to or refuse to consent to. And all citizens of Canada are protected under the medical and legal ethics of voluntary informed consent. And there are a number of documents that support this right to informed consent. So the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, for example, we have a freedom of conscience, belief, thought, life, liberty, security of the person. We have the right to make decisions about what happens to our body in a medical context. There's the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights, and we have the Nuremberg Code, which is particularly relevant because all of the COVID vaccines that are on the market in Canada right now are experimental or investigational. These vaccines remain in their phase three trials, and they will do so until 2023 at the earliest. That means that all trial participants are actually research subjects. The impression that you get from listening to our government officials or our public health officials is that the vaccines are perfectly safe. But many physicians I know who have tried to report their concerns about vaccine side effects or how important it is that we find a therapeutic treatment for COVID, they say that they can't get anyone to listen to them. Now, the College of Physicians and Surgeons released a statement warning physicians not to raise questions that go against the narrative. This is so incredibly harmful because the whole nature of the scientific discipline, the scientific method, proceeds on the idea that you start with a hypothesis, you test it out. If all the data supports your initial hypothesis, that's great, you can proceed to the next step. But if it doesn't, that's an invitation for people to propose alternative ideas and alternative hypotheses. And we are certainly in a position now where there is enough concern, enough dissension among very well-credentialed, very insightful people that the scientific discourse, the medical discourse needs to open itself up and bring all of these voices to the table to make sure that we aren't doing more harm than good. The core principle of medical practice is non-maleficence, which is do no harm. The doctor's primary obligation is to the patient within the context of a very rich fiduciary relationship or a relationship of trust between the physician and the patient. One of the problems with the current rollout of the COVID vaccines is that they're being administered outside of that context and in a context where there is no trust. There can't be trust. I think we need to put the vaccination issue back into the physician's office and make it about the relationship between those two people and not about the government or pharmaceutical companies. There's a great deal of pressure on young people within their families to, to get vaccinated. You know, we have the family picnic coming up. Grandma and grandpa are going to be there. You want to be able to go, don't you? You don't want to put them at risk, do you? Children being, you know, invited to, we might even say lured to Nathan Phillips Square in order to be vaccinated and they're being told you don't need to come with a parent, we will assess competency when you arrive, and by the way, have, help yourself to an ice cream on the way out. That's why I say I think we have a crisis of informed consent in Canada right now, especially with respect to children. I think one of the biggest uh, things that worries me we're seeing right now is, is people turning on one another. Don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. If you look at every other slide from a democracy or a republic in history into a kind of dictatorship or autocratic state, people turning on one another is, is definitely one of the early stages of that slide. You know, we are at the precipice of a very scary national and global situation. And that isn't because of a virus, but rather because of the response. If you're watching from Canada, remember that we have a Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We have a very good constitution. And those documents are one of the key elements that makes our country democratic. We need to have courts and lawyers and government officials who apply those documents appropriately. And we need to have citizens who participate effectively as democratic citizens. And that means asking the right questions of our officials, not just focusing on our rights, but our responsibilities as well. Medical procedures in Canada require your voluntary consent. And please don't let anyone tell you otherwise.
Informed consent. It's your right. In Canada, it's the law. The history of medicine is, unfortunately, the history of human experimentation without consent. It's also the history of well-intentioned human and government error. That's why the doctrine of informed consent exists, as a safeguard against medical abuse and mistakes. Since you're the one who ultimately has to bear the consequences of any medical intervention, it's your right to make an informed, free choice. So when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccines, what should informed consent look like? Well, you should be informed of the risks, benefits, and side effects, as well as alternative treatments. You should be given information that's specific to you, as the risk from COVID-19 varies greatly with age and pre-existing conditions. And you have the right to know the potential benefit of any intervention. For example, Pfizer reported that its vaccine shows a 95% efficacy. That sounds like it protects you 95% of the time, right? But that's not actually what that number means. That 95% refers to the relative risk reduction, but it doesn't tell you how much your overall risk is reduced by vaccination. For that, we need absolute risk reduction. In the Pfizer trial, 8 out of 18,198 people who were given the vaccine developed COVID-19. In the unvaccinated placebo group, 162 people got it, which means that even without the vaccine, the risk of contracting COVID-19 was extremely low at 0.88%, which the vaccine then reduced to 0.04%. So the net benefit, or the absolute risk reduction that you're being offered with a Pfizer vaccine is 0.84%. That 95% number? That refers to the relative difference between 0.88 and 0.04%. That's what they call 95% relative risk reduction. And relative risk reduction is well known to be a misleading number, which is why the FDA recommends using absolute risk reduction instead. Which begs the question, how many people would have chosen to take the COVID-19 vaccines had they understood that they offered less than 1% benefit? You're entitled to know the risks and side effects. In Canada, any potentially serious risk must be disclosed. Although many side effects are still unknown, the vaccine adverse event reporting systems are capturing unprecedented numbers of adverse events, including hospitalizations and deaths. You also have the right to know about alternative treatments. There's been great success using early treatment protocols which include vitamin D and ivermectin, both of which have long-term safety data going back 40 years in over a billion people. Your consent needs to be voluntary. That means that you came to the decision freely and without duress or undue influence. You should never feel coerced, bribed, or threatened. The experimental nature of the COVID-19 vaccines needs to be clearly communicated. These vaccines are still officially in phase three trials as they lack long-term safety data. And finally, consent is not transferable. If you consented to one particular vaccine with a protocol of two doses over a specific period tested and recommended by the manufacturer, then that's what you should get. So if you weren't provided with the information you've just learned, if your decision was made as a result of pressure, and if you didn't receive the vaccine protocol that you agreed to, then what you experienced was not informed consent.